Concept art is about taking your ideas and making them a reality with visual design. Whether you're independent or part of a larger team, concept art can help you build entire worlds and get everyone on board with the visual direction of your project. Terms and conditions apply. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do it with challenges along the way. First, you need an idea. Here are two methods I use for generating them. Get inspired. For this, I take some time away from the process. Watch some films, read some comics, go outside, basically get a life. Get busy. Sometimes you don't have the luxury of time to wait around for the inspiration to come to you. So look at creative prompts, challenges, create scenarios, and write absolutely everything down that comes to your mind. Let me know in the comments how you generate ideas. You know, let's help each other out. So what am I gonna make? I've been working on a new game, but it's about time I started making the actual art for it. These are just the placeholder. Here's the idea. A little wood chopping dwarf called Lumber was out gathering some wood. When he returns home, he finds it completely engulfed in flames as the dragon flies away into the clouds. That mother Fortunately, he spots a tower high up in the sky. Perhaps whoever lives there knows where the dragon went so he can get his revenge. So Lumber's house is the starting area of the game. Right now, it's some generic looking B&Q shed. <sighs> come here, come here. I got what you need. If your idea is boring, ask some questions about it. What does Lumber do? Where does he chop wood? Where does he live? What is the house made of? If you put a slice of bread between two slices of bread, is it a bread sandwich or just three slices of bread? Instead of making some concept art for boring generic log house, I'm gonna make some concept art for Lumber's home in the woods. Carved into a tree stump with handmade woodwork features. It's lit by the sunlight that breaks through the canopy of the giant trees that surround it. Challenge one, come up with your own idea and develop it by asking questions about it. If you have an idea already, you can use that. And don't just copy mine. If you're really struggling to come up with an idea, here's a prompt for you. Write your idea down and we can use it for the next challenge. Gathering reference is absolutely vital to this process. Imagine your brain is a visual library that can store images that we can use. The more research and reference gathering that we do, the more unique and believable the idea we can come up with. So how do you do it? Well, gather images, video clips, book words from online or in person that you think will be important for your idea. I always try and get some references from real life as well, if possible. I generally organize my references into two categories. The first one is the mood board. As the name suggests, what I'm looking for here is the mood or the vibe. I really love the grass of this piece and how it's flown in the wind it looks quite natural you know the giant trees and the shapes in the roots and especially how it's looking down on this character making them look really small the light shining through that's perfect for the light shining through the canopies of my trees the composition of this piece where you've got the big tree in the foreground as it pushes the rest of the things into the background that's all the mood board is about really i'm just gathering images that inspire me for the world and the piece that i'm about to create the second type of reference is specific or technical reference. These are to help me learn how to actually draw the thing. Otherwise, uh, I'm just making it up. My idea, I highlight specific topics that I think would be useful to research. For example, a bunch of trees. Look how awesome this is. Look at the roots on this. Fairy houses. I never even thought anything like this existed before. I've got carpentry and wood housing. What the roofs look like, maybe a little bit messy. Sticks, nice wooden tiles. Komorobi, the effect of light shining through a forest. Super important. A bunch of different mushrooms and foliage trees. Little houses in the woods. Everything here is to help me learn the subject matter or what I'm going to draw. Challenge two, gather some references for your idea, breaking it down into the mood board and the technical references for specific areas of your idea. I definitely want to do a big concept piece that reflects the idea as a whole. But first, I'm going to focus on designing Lumber's house because I don't know what it looks like yet. I usually start off with some exploration sketches, sketching directly from the reference to study it and get familiar with the subjects. What about some mushrooms? You know, there's so many shapes and sizes that I probably would never have known. And you can learn that pretty quickly just by sketching them out and observing what they look like. Look at this one here. It looks like it's got some sort of dress on or something. Just by drawing this, I'm committing it to memory. I'm not trying to be too precious with that either. You know, these aren't amazing drawings, but having different references, observing them and drawing them yourself will really help you, especially when it comes to the next step, designing your own ideas. When I'm more confident with the subject matter, it's time to create some designs. I really try to be loose and quick, try ideas out, use weird shapes, not bog myself down with the details. Iteration is really key here. If you force yourself to do more designs than you want, you can't surprise yourself with what you come up with. And don't worry about your work being messy. It's about getting an idea down, not so much about super detail and polish render just yet. It's also good to get some feedback during this stage as well. Ask people which designs they prefer, which one fits the thing that you're going for the most, and keep iterating on that. What do you think, eh? Perfect. <laughs> Challenge three. Using your references, do some exploration sketches and iterative design. 
Now it's time to narrow down the options into a final design. I chose to take this little idea. I liked how the stump had a handmade roof on one side to protect it from the rain, some mushrooms growing on the other side. All throughout this final sketch, I was still iterating through the design, trying to add a sense of texture in the wood and changing things around until I was happy with it. When designing something, function can be just as important as form. I tried to imagine how the trees turn into houses over time, with scaffolding to help harvest the wood from top to bottom. Challenge four, choose a direction from your sketches and create a final concept design. If you got this far, you did it. You took an idea and brought it to life with concept design. We're not done just yet. Like I already said, I definitely want to do a big concept piece that reflects the idea as a whole. You know, with the light coming through the trees, the entire scene and not just the house. So here's how I do an entire concept scene. There's a difference between concept art and an illustration, but depending on your project, there may be a desire for more rendered concept art, especially if you really want to sell your idea. So sometimes that line can become blurred. Start with the thumbnails. The idea is to use only two or three values to focus purely on the composition and shapes. The composition will carry over into the next stages of the piece and any mistakes with that will be an absolute nightmare to fix later on. So I try and focus and get it right here. I'm gonna quickly walk you through my thumbnails and the thought processes I had while I was making them. As you can see, they all start off with the same aspect ratio, which is basically just the dimensions or the relationship between the width and the height. I tried a couple of different ideas. This one, for example, is looking down onto the house as if it's surrounded by trees. The house is sort of tucked away here as it's surrounded by the giant trees. This one's sort of a quirky one where I've got loads of diagonal lines that's supposed to give it a little bit more energy, a little bit more action, but it looks a little bit too weird for me. And this one again, you're looking down onto the house, but there's like a lake or river or something running through it just to give that area a little bit more character. One compositional tool that I use quite a lot is the rule of thirds. So if you split your canvas into thirds, not this messily, you put the areas of interest into the cross-sectional areas like here and here for example. That's a really useful trick if you want to make your compositions look a little bit more interesting. I did live stream a lot of this process as well and people were giving me some suggestions for compositions. Someone wanted to know what it would look like if we were looking just straight onto the house. It just looked a little bit too flat for my tastes. And this one here was intended to be sort of an upwards looking view as opposed to the downwards views that we've had before. But to me it looks a little bit creepy. I did really like this composition but it just looks a little bit too crushed and claustrophobic. I then tried a couple more using more than just two values. But all of these compositions had the same problem in that they're squashed down and there's no real sense of verticality. The trees are a huge part of this environment and I want them to feel giant. So for the next thumbnails, I tried changing the aspect ratio that I was working in and making the height much longer than the width. And I really liked how that looked actually. You got much more space with the trees. The house itself looks small among them. I tried some of the other compositions, just adding some height to them ones as well. All these were much closer to what I was going for. I did still like this sort of looking down view on the house. I think when you're looking down on it and it's surrounded by huge trees, it can look a little bit lonely. This one really stood out to me because again, I like how the house is tucked away behind the trees. I also thought if you had the light streaming through at sort of this angle, it would create a really nice composition overall. So this is the one that I ended up going with. This concept piece will be in pixel art because the game is in pixel art. And while this will never actually be in the game, I wanted to see how it would look in low res. So I scaled down the thumbnail to 120 by 108 canvas, a random number that I picked, and drew a sketch on top. What do you know about perspective? Super easy. Place the horizon line, choose vanishing points. I'm going to use two point perspective because it's good for outdoor scenes. So I choose two points on the horizon line. Quick tip, the closer these points are, the more skewed the image looks. So keep that in mind. Draw lines from these points and they will be your guides. You can sketch in basic 3D shapes on top and you got yourself a drawing in perspective. I then do a rough value painting. Value structure is absolutely key for depth and 3D form. So this just gives me a good idea going forward. What's a difficult value structure actually? So I had to look at some reference. To study the references, there's a couple of cool things that you can do. Let me show you. So this is my image layer here. If I put a layer on top, fill it with black, and then change that mode to color, we can get a rough idea of what the values of the piece are like. To get an even better idea of the values, I'm gonna duplicate the image, go to filter, effect, and mosaic, simplify it down, pixelate it, I guess. And that helps me study the values a lot easier. So I can see from the light rays coming through that the actual value structure of that is really light at the top. And as it gets lower and lower, it's getting darker almost like a gradient of light, which makes sense if you think about it. I can also see that in the main lit area here, it has a high value range. 
light values surrounded by some dark values and I imagine that's because the light is directly hitting it and creating some cast shadows and ambient occlusion shadows some really dark spots as well as some really highlighted spots from the light source as well the surrounding elements are quite dark like these trees dark foreground darkness everywhere it's doom and gloom a really quick way to help study the values of any reference and this can easily give you an idea of the value structure that you can use in your piece as well Mine is definitely more high contrast, but you can see exactly what I mean here. Where I've just taken that value structure and applied it to my piece. Then I did a quick color rough, basically just focus on the colors to figure out the overall vibe. You can see that the majority of the foreground and the background is one color with a really saturated color in the house to contrast that background to help make it stand out. So that's what I was really going for here with the light rays going through as well. To help try some different things out, I basically just use some correction layers on top. So if you go to layer, new correction layer, hue saturation or color balance, you can change these things around. Try some different things out. A more warm piece, a cooler piece here, alieny looking piece that kind of looks like they're about to get abducted or something that definitely wasn't what I was going for. This was what I really liked. The red and the greens. Red and greens are complementary colors. I really like the tint of yellow with the light as well. Make it just a little bit warmer. One really cool thing you can do if you've got a value rough like I do here, duplicate it, put it on top of your color rough and then change the layer mode to overlay and you can get a really rough idea of what your scene might look like in the end. Obviously the colors and the values are not perfect but if you squint it looks pretty good I think. Well Maybe, maybe if you squint so hard you close your eyes. <laughs> With all my plans in place, I started cleaning everything up. I made individual layers for everything to give the most control. I usually start in values first and then add the colors later on. I also started polishing the house first because it's the key focus of the piece, so I want the most detail to be there. Before starting, work on the light rays. But how do you do the light rays, you ask? First start off with a layer for the light rays, which hits all the areas that I think the light rays would actually hit. Change the layer mode to soft light and I reduce the opacity to about 50%. The layer mode that you use and the amount of opacity that you reduce it really depends on your piece so i'd recommend experiment with those and also i learned from studying the references before in values that the light rays are actually strongest at the top and it gets weaker as it goes down sort of like a gradient of light so in order to get that effect i actually added a mask to the layer which is a non-destructive way of editing it so without the mask for example if i delete it it's deleting the actual pixels but if i add a mask and then delete the mask i use the soft brush really weakly with the mask here, it's not affecting the actual pixels. So if I just disabled the mask, we still have all of our information in the pixels underneath. I also used an eraser to soften out the edges as well, you know. Automatic anti-aliasing. Pixel art on easy mode. Can hear some pixel enthusiasts now like, oh my god, this isn't pixel art. You don't have control of all the pixels. Well, fortunately, I've created an email for you to send your complaints to. Just kidding, I was also concerned that I was losing control of the pixels by using a soft brush. But to be honest, I kind of like the way it looks. It's sort of a mixture between pixel law and digital law. And I don't really care about rules or guidelines or anything. If it achieves the look I'm going for, then we're all good. To add some more detail to the light rays, you can see that I've actually erased some areas within it as well because there'll be leaves and branches from trees blocking some of the light rays. So it's not just going to be one consistent light block throughout. And then I added in some little dust spots you can see here. And I really think that helps bring it together and make it look a little bit more magical. And the best part is definitely at the end when it all starts to come together. I adjust the colors using adjustment layers like hue saturation and brightness contrast stuff. I clean up the shapes using consistent pixel shapes for the leaves and the grass. I'm breaking it up a little to make it look more natural. And to finish it off, I use a soft brush again to add some glow around the house to really make it pop.
the final bonus challenge, create a full concept scene, or really polish up your idea to sell it to us all. And don't go anywhere. If you took part in this video's challenges, I would love to share some of your work in the next art video. So make sure you send it to me on social media, or even better, on the Discord, where we have a dedicated section for challenges and a whole community to help you and cheer you on. Thanks for watching.